So last time, what we did was we talked about a whole bunch of vocabulary words, including the types of data like qualitative, quantitative, and hopefully your homework gave you a nice review of that. Today we have just a few more. We'll be in section 1.5. I would like you to read section 1.4. Okay, read through that. There's some good stuff in there. We just won't be covering it too much in class. We're going to get on into some maybe more important things. So in 1.5, we're going to start with some design of experiments type things. And then I'm going to show you, because we talked about, remember that word random? We talked about if you're going to collect data, it has to be random. We're going to define what random is because we really haven't talked about that that much. And then I'll tell you how to collect data randomly. So that'll be most of our day. Hopefully we get into chapter two and we talk about frequency distributions. That'll be, that'll be bonus. I see okay, we get that far. So today, if you're keeping track, we're on 1.5. And we'll talk a little bit about design of experiments or observations. talk about experiments and observations, we kind of need to know the difference between them. So what does it mean to be an observation versus an experiment? And the whole definition of this, uh, of these two things, distinguishes them between how you treat your subjects, whether you're doing something to your subjects or whether you're not. Which one would you say has an influence on their subjects, experiments or observations? Yeah, observations is like what it sounds like. You just sit there and you observe something. Um, this measures specific traits, but it doesn't modify the subjects. So no modification of subjects happens here. You're not like changing them in any way. So this would, we'll, we'll say this this way. Measure specific traits. I'll give you some examples in a bit. but does not modify the subjects. We're talking about the subjects of the study. The experiment, on the other hand, experiments, you apply some treatment. And we call it a treatment. It could be anything. It could be uh, if you're doing like drug tests, you know how they, they test patients and they see how they react that would be considered a treatment. So you apply some sort of treatment and then you observe the effects on your subjects. Or we'll say not observe because I don't want you to get confused with that. We'll say then we'll measure the effect. That would be a better way to say that. One great example of like observational type studies is what they do often, we've already talked about this in this class, but polling, like going out there and seeing people's opinions. You don't really go out there, right, and say, hey, take this pill. Now, how do you feel about the president? You know, you don't really do that. You just say, how do you feel? And then you observe how they, they react to that. You're not doing anything to them. You're not changing their attitude in any way, shape, or form. You're just pretty much observing how they're responding to your questions. Do you kind of get the observation type deal? Uh, so polling would be a good example for observation. An experiment would be like what we said just a little while ago, like a drug treatment. Um, when people, when companies do drug treatments, they usually have what's called a control group, and they have the test group, and they give the control group these things called a placebo. Have you ever heard of a placebo? Yeah. And it's like a sugar pill, but they think they're getting the real thing, and there's actually a placebo effect that your mind can create that gives you some side effects. Kind of crazy, how huh? that's psychology stuff. That's pretty amazing. Um, and then they give the control group the actual drug. And they measure the, 
the test group versus the control group and they see if there's actually an effect. That would definitely be an experiment, right? Because you are modifying your subjects. If you're not modifying them in any way, you're not doing anything to change them, that's an observation. If you are modifying them, that's an experiment. Do you get the, the difference here? Okay. Do you have any other examples for observation or experiment? Have you thought of any? The brief time. How about an observation? What would be another example like an observation? I'll put it to you this way. Let's say you went out there and you counted all the people in this room who had blonde hair. Would that be an experiment or would that be observation? <laughs> now what if you took some, a spray bottle full of bleach and then you start spraying it everywhere and counted people that had blonde hair afterwards? <laughs> you would never do, I hope you, you would never do that, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding with you. Uh, but if you, if you tested like a certain sample of hair dye and see if it turned people blonde, then that would definitely be an experiment. It has to do with whether you're modifying your subjects or whether you're not. How people understand the difference between observational and experiment? Good. And you'll have some homework on that. I'll show you the difference. So, we just spoke a little while ago about being random. We all know that if you're going to collect data, you have to be random. But what does, what does random even mean? Anybody out there have like a layman's term definition of, of random? How would you define random? Someone on the left hand side of the room, how would you say, well, that's random? Come on, y'all say, that's totally random. Haven't you ever said that? I know you said it just like that. See me. Haven't you ever said that's random? What's that mean to you? Like not in order. Okay. So there, there was no predicting what the outcome would be? That's, that's actually a good definition of random. That was great. So if we're talking about random, what we mean in terms of a sample, in terms of collecting data, is that no single person uh, would be predicted to be in that sample. You can't, sorry, uh, each member of the population has equal, we'll say, chance of being selected. No one for sure is going to be in the sample before you start the sample. Do you kind of get the idea? So I can't make a sample in this classroom and go, okay, I'm going to make a random sample, but I definitely want you in it. But that wouldn't be random anymore because I'm choosing her. Are you with me on this? Random means every one of you would have an equal chance of being selected. How, what's a good way to do that? What would be like an easy way to do that in this classroom? What would I do if I was going to make a random sample? Could I just go you and you and you and you and you and you? Would that be necessarily random? That was easy for me because I was looking in this direction. But how would I make it random? Someone, you've done this before. I know you've done this. I heard two people say it. What did you say? Like pick names out of something. Great. Yeah, if I had all your names in a hat and I mixed them all up and I, I just went in there and pulled one out. If they're all the same size and shape and I can't tell who's who, that's pretty random, right? If all your names are there, then that's a random sample. And that's what we mean by random. Every person in here would have an equal chance of being picked. So that's our, our definition. Each member of a population has an equal chance of being selected in the sample. Now I'm going to give you one more definition and then I'm going to show you some ways that we can make this happen. Some very common types of collecting data that people use all the time uh, that, will make, that will ensure that you have a random sample. You want to know how to do that, right? So we, if we're going to actually collect the data ourselves, you need to make sure this happens. The last definition I have for you for a while before we get into the methods here is called simple random. And it's, it, sounds, well, it sounds simple because the word's in it, but it's kind of a unique idea. I'll explain it real well for you. So a simple random sample.
here's how a simple random sample is defined. It says that any group of the same size has an equal likelihood of being selected. Here's what that means for this classroom. If I was going to pick out five people in here, the, a simple, being simple random sample would be like any five people I picked has an equal chance of any other five people. For instance, like you, 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 and you have the same chance of being selected as you, 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 and you. If I'm drawing names out of a hat, that's going to happen. Do you see what I'm talking about? It, it, it says that no single group can be singled out and say, oh, this group of five people has a special case. They might be selected more often. Then it would not be simple random. Because then groups of people would be more likely to be in your sample. Are you getting the, the idea here? So random sample means every single individual has an equal chance of being selected. Simple random means every group of the same size. So each group of five people has an equal chance of being selected. Do you get the difference? One's versus with an individual, just picking names out of a hat. One is you picking five names out of a hat at a time. Every, five, every group of five names has an equal chance of being selected. That's the simple random idea. Now, how do we make this happen? There's four common ways. Oh, I better write the definition for you. Uh, this says that each group of size n, n's our variable here, don't get freaked out, it's just a variable, all right? Just means the size of our group. Each group of size n has an equal chance of being selected. And now I can show you how to do that. There's four common ways that we're going to cover. Techniques, is that right? Yeah. Good, I totally guessed. So four common techniques. The first one is something that you would do if you really had no statistical background. You might just go out there, and if I asked you to to determine what is people's favorite movie right now, you might just start calling up your friends and saying, hey, um, what's your favorite movie? And they go, in America, duh. And you go, oh, okay, what's your favorite movie? Well, The Incredible Hulk, because I'm old school, whatever. And you start asking your friends like that, right? That'd be really easy to do. Wouldn't that be easy to do? Because you already have their numbers. You don't have to go out of your way to do something. Or if you were just lazy, maybe you just go outside and go, hey, what's your favorite movie? And every person who walks by, you just ask them, you know, what's your favorite movie? What's your favorite movie? Is that random, necessarily? What do you think? Yeah. If you're asking the people, your friends who you already have on your, your phone list, well, did I have a chance? Am I on your phone list? I should be. But am I on your phone? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm probably not on there. And this guy is probably, what's your name? Jared. Jared? Jared's probably not, uh, is Kayla, is he on your phone list? Do you want him to be? <laughs> That's the uh, But, you know, if, uh, if, uh, if you had that, if you didn't have him on your list, then he 